Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading a creepypasta called Pokemon Lost Silver. This creepypasta was suggested by Wolfpack. Thank you Wolfpack for the suggestion, I appreciate it greatly. And if anybody else has any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. If I read your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in the next video. So again, thank you Wolfpack for the suggestion, I appreciate it greatly. You see, I am a simple college student living alone in an apartment. I was very enthusiastic about the release of Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver here in the States. I have purposely locked myself out of all media and the internet aside for school purposes. That means no 4chan, no Bulbapedia, etc. As I was busy with the school year and being poor at the time, I wasn't able to buy Soul Silver on its launch date. After my school year ended, I ordered Soul Silver on Amazon. However, it would take a week for it to arrive. I decided that during that time, I would replay my crystal version on my Game Boy Color. However, I realized long ago, my mother threw it away because I told her the save went dead and I was very upset about it then. She also threw away my silver version. So all I have is my Game Boy Color. As such, I set out to GameStop and bought a used silver version, as it's the only Pokemon game left that they have for the Game Boy Color. $10, fairly cheap. I went home and I started it up for a nostalgic trip. However, that's where things started getting bizarre and most likely the reason why you're reading this. The Game Freak logo started up as normal, but it was just frozen there. I thought the cart was just eroded or something, so I turned it off and on. The same thing happened. I tried pressing A and start over and over and all of the buttons. Eventually, the logo vanished and there was a black screen for about 5 seconds. Suddenly, rather than going to the usual menu screen, I was already in the game in a previous saved file, which was odd as I was expecting all of these cards to have been wiped by the poor battery. Either way, I wasn't complaining, as I would have chosen the continue option to see what the previous guy did anyways. First off, I checked his trainer information. His name was just dot dot dot. He didn't have much originality. I checked his profile and apparently he had 999 99 hours put into the game with all 16 badges and 99999.9 Pokey Dollars and all 251 Pokemon on the Pokédex. Seeing as he apparently had Meow and Celebi log it also. I'm, I'm guessing he either used a Game Genie or was a really hardcore Pokemon player back then. I checked his Pokemon to see what a badass team he has. To my surprise, I saw 5 unknown and a 6 Pokemon named Hurry. I'm thinking that this must be some cruel joke by the person who last played the game. But I decided to check the, the profiles of these Pokemon anyway. As expected, there were different letters of unknown, all level 5. I was a bit shaky with my unknown alphabet at the time, but I identified the word spelled it out to be leave. As for the 6th Pokemon, it turned out to be a Sindaquil. Mind you, this is before there were individualized Pokemon icons. The Sindaquil looked normal. But it was a level 5 and only 1 HP left with only 2 attacks, Leer and Flash. I don't know why they named him Hurry, but at the time, I just dis disregarded it. The most eerie thing was that despite my volume being at max, none of the Pokemon had had said their usual cries. 
just pure silence. Having enough of the team, I closed it. I was parked at what appeared to be a room inside Bell Sprout Tower. However, for some reason, there were no NPCs around. Even more eerie was that the pillar in the middle didn't move at all, as if just leaning on its side. There was no music at all, and there were no exits or ladders, or at least I thought there wasn't. I walked it around for a few minutes, but couldn't seem to find my way out. There was certainly not a room I've seen in the Bell Spot Tower before. I tried checking my items for an escape rope, but the bag was completely empty. There wasn't any wild Pokemon either. Finally, I managed to find a ladder, which turned out to be behind the pillar. The screen turned black and the music finally started playing. I had a sudden chill as I recognized that melody I heard to be the theme you hear when you listen to the radio at the Alpha Ruins where the unknown are at. I immediately realized that it wasn't a loading transition but rather I was in a dark room and would need flash. Before I took care of that though, I immediately checked my pokey gear to change the radio to something more pleasant. But it turns out there was no radio card or even a phone nor time cards. There was only a map card in which gold was just walking in a mist of black. By the way, uh, gold is the name that I gave to the previous player who was nameless. I recall that the Cyndaquil has no flash, so I turned off my Poke Gear and made Cyndaquil use flash. I didn't see any message saying, hurry, has used flash, or anything like that. The room just became lit, just like that, and I soon regretted it. The room was a chilling blood red with a linear gray path heading south. The ladder I used to go up and down was not there anymore. I had no choice but to head south. The screen got darker every 20 steps I made until I finally made it to the end, which appears to be a sign. I read the sign, which said, Turn back now. Suddenly, I was asked to answer yes or no, but there was no question asked. I chose yes and I do not know what I was asking. And the screen went black again, making a ladder climate sound. The unknown radio music stopped and in a few seconds was replaced with the not as creepy Pokemon flute radio music. I was in another dark room, but I held my breath and used flash again. Suddenly, it said that hurry has fainted which was odd since I'd recall that there was no status condition like poison on him and I clearly wasn't in a battle. I checked my Pokemon quickly and suddenly he was no longer in my party. In fact, after a bit of investigating, none of my Pokemon are there, but instead all replaced with level 10 unknown. I did the same thing as before and spell it out the unknown. My then team of unknown spelled it, he died. Either way, after the creepy change, the room was lit to reveal myself in a very small room that appears to be only four squares big. The walls of that room were gray bricks as if I was inside something that was hollowed out. Outside the room appears to be a bunch of graves similar to the ones in Pokemon Red Blue. I walked it around a small room and pressed A, but nothing happened. I've already concluded that this was clearly a hacked game and some sadistic fuck sold it to GameStop. However, my curiosity kept me going. I checked the trainer profile of 
gold again, only to find out gold was missing his arms. He also seemed to appear less smug, but rather seemed more sad and empty in a way that I do not know how to describe. For some reason, it also now said that he has 24 badges, which was clearly impossible. After a few minutes of aimless wandering, my character suddenly spun and did the escape rope spinning animation. Instead of flying off though, my character spun downward slowly, as if sinking. After that screen, the music stopped. After finally landing, the overworld sprite of gold is colored different now. Instead of the usual red color he does, he appeared completely white now, including his skin. It's as if he came straight from the colorless Game Boy games, place it in a colored background on the Game Boy Color. I checked his profile, and now, while well now is a white as his overworld sprite, he lost his legs and has what appears to be a bloody tears from his eyes. It also says he now has 32 badges, which now started to disturb me as this change of numbers seemed to represent something important. I also checked my Pokemon, which this time contains 5 unknowns and a level 100, Celebi, without a nickname. The unknown, or this time level it 15, and spell it out dying. I checked the Celebi's profile. It was a shiny Celebi, except there is only half of the spike, one leg, one arm, one eye. It only has one attack, Perish Song. The area I was in itself was the Sprout Towers with the immobile pillar as before, except everything is apparently red now. I walk it north for what felt like forever. Eventually, I finally encountered some generic man and woman NPC. They were all lined up to the side just facing the long slantish pillar in the middle. They were also white and nothing happened when I tried to speak to them. I kept on going north until eventually the pillar finally appeared chop it off with a transparent red in that spot. I went up to the red without even pressing A. I was suddenly engaged and finally in a battle. The music starts again, which it sounds like the unknown radio music again, but played backwards. Gold's battle back sprite matches his front one with the bloody eyes, white skin and lack of arms, while red sprite was the same as before in GSC, except transparent. The text simply said, wants to battle, as if he has no name, and both of us only have one Pokemon each, which is weird, as I sworn I had six with the unknowns. The shiny Celebi came out conveniently with half a sprite for the back sprite also. The shiny nose and animation was different as the sound it made sounded like multiple screech attacks and used consecutively. Red sent out a seemingly normal male Pikachu except he is level 255 and his sprite seems sad and has tears in his eyes. Rather than the usual fight item PKMN run menu, I was only given the options to use the attacks. Since Celebi only has one, I choose it. Naturally, since Pikachu was level 255, he went first. Pikachu Use Curse. Lowering his speed and increasing his other stats. I'm not even sure if Pikachu could use Curse. Celebi. Use Perish Song. In three turns, both Pokemon got KO'd. Not like I had a choice.
At this point, it didn't even go back to the fight menu, as the battle just continued without me. Also note that there was no animation at all for some reason. Pikachu used Flail, which didn't do much damage despite his level and boost as his health was maxed. Celebi used Perish Song. Nothing happens as it was already used. Pikachu used Frustration, which did a shit ton of damage, knocking Celebi down to less than 10 HP. Celebi used Pain Split, which surprised me as Celebi didn't even have that attack in the first place. Now Celebi and Pikachu have about 150 HP. Pikachu used Mean Look. Not like that did anything. As expected, due to the effects of Perish Song, my Celebi fainted. Except in the text, it said, Celebi has died. And instead of the ordinary drop off the screen animation, the Celebi back sprite just vanished. For some reason, the Pikachu was still up even with the Perish Song, and it didn't count as any loss. Pikachu used one more different attack beyond the 5 attack limit. Pikachu used Destroy Bond. Afterwards, it said, Pikachu has died, with a slow fade out animation. Apparently, I was the winner, as the transparent red sprite showed up and said, dot 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 dot. At this point, I just freaked out as the transparent red sprite was suddenly beheaded, leaving nothing but his transparent body. The battle then ended at that point and faded out along with the music. I'm back in the overworld, with another change to the gold sprite. He's now as transparent as red's overworld sprite. I quickly checked gold's profile, where this time the only thing remains of him is his head, with a transparent skin. The head was zoomed in a bit, showing a black void in his eyes. It now stated that he has 40 badges. I then back it out and checked my Pokemon. They were all level 20 shiny unknown, which spell it out, no more. I was at what I now know is next to the end. There was apparently no music playing, but for some reason I still felt like something was there that could be heard. I was back in my room in New Bark Town. Maybe finally I get to play this game properly, but who am I kidding? I knew the sadistic fuck must have done something. I walk it around my room to interact with things, as I'm a bit afraid to go down the stairs to see what was awaiting me down there. Note I said walk it. As while the background was moving, Gold was not moving his transparent limbs at all while doing so. Just floating, like, like those ghosts you see in Diamond Pearl. As expected, the radio, computer, and TV did not work, so I had no choice but to go down the stairs. I ended up in the same lower level room of my house. Everything appeared normal, except mom isn't home. After failing to interact with anything in, the, in this room, I decided to go outside. To my surprise, the door leading outside at the south didn't work, and instead, I just walked it straight through it to a void. I continued moving south to see what the fuck was going on. My house vanished as I head south into the void. It was creepy as when I entered the void, the outline of gold's transparent sprite turned it white to contrast with the pitch black. Eventually I reached a white area and gold sprite turned it black and transparent again. I continued south without thinking of stopping at all. After a long trek south, I finally encountered something. It was Gold's regular sprite. I talked to it. He said, 
goodbye forever, and vanished. As that happened, I said, question mark, question mark, question mark, use nightmare, which at this point, I would not deny that being possible. Gold did another escape rope animation spinning slowly downwards like before. I'm now back in the small hollow cutout room surrounded by graves earlier. Or at least I say I was back there, as there's no sprite anymore. I tried to walk around but nothing moved, not even while bumping noises. I checked my trainer profile with absolute no gold sprite left. It said I have zero badges and all the pictures of the Joto gym leaders at the bottom were replaced with skulls. I checked in my Pokemon, which were all level 25 unknown. As expected, it spelled out the phrase that I dare to read. I'm dead. As soon as I went back to the overworld, the room I supposedly was in was then covered with the same locks as the wall. I then figured out what exactly that room was when the final text was said. Rest in peace. The room was a big grave, surrounded by other graves. Gold had already been dead. He died presumably a few years after he defeated Red. He was a young trainer who, despite his efforts to collect so many badges and attempts at becoming a Pokemon master, was still unable to avoid the inevitable fate of death, and his efforts were eventually forgotten by the next generation. I was unable to escape from that text no matter what I pressed. I tried resetting the game, and the same thing happened, at which I then finally decided to give up on that horrible nightmare. After that experience, I would never look at the gimmick unknown the same way again. They say that only the first generation have folk tales and legends, but the second generation have shown me how unpleasant the truth can be. I eventually enjoyed Soul Silver immensely, but I still can't unthink what that rigged game has told me. <laughs>